Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Good afternoon. Bless the name of Jesus on tonight. I greet you in love and in the name of Jesus, we honor him. We give him the glory, the honor, and the praise that is due his name for he is worthy. We bless you all for, thank you for joining us on tonight. We thank you, hallelujah, for taking the time to tune in. As I ask you each week, go ahead and if you're on YouTube, go ahead and tag that, that button and get it over on your page. Matter of fact, let's set a precedence every week. I won't have to ask you next week. You'll just go ahead and share the minute that two minute countdown hits your screen. So let's share while I go into prayer. Father, we bless you. We love you. We honor you. This is the day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We thank you, God, for choosing us. Hallelujah. We thought we chose you, God, but you chose us. We are your chosen people. We thank you, God. And on tonight, we honor you. We bless you. We give your name the glory and the praise. We ask you now to speak through us that your name be glorified. I decrease so that you can increase in me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Can we get some hearts, some blessed hands, some hands lifted up, some mouths that are filled with praise on tonight that are just so happy that we can gather that we're still here in the land of the living. We still have breath in our body. Glory to God. So on tonight, again, we won't be before you long because we got to get to the wisdom room on tonight. I'm not going to cut you short, but we still want to get into the wisdom room. The Lord is stretching us. We have something else to do after we complete our Tuesday night teaching. Amen. We're going to continue to go into our wisdom study on, on our online platform. So here we go. We're going to talk about rest again on tonight. If you recall our message from Sunday, we talked about the rest that God wanted to get us to. It was the spiritual rest that we were referencing where we said the Lord was telling us to come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I give you rest. Remember, I shared with you that even the Lord rested on the seventh day. He created, he spoke, he created everything. He aligned it. And then he rested. And so that's what he's calling for us to do. And, and remember, I said in the book of Hebrews, chapter number four, he said there remained a rest for the people of God. And we had to labor. It's a work to enter into rest because we're so used to trying to make things happen that we forget that it's God that does the work. We confess, we profess, we decree and we declare. And then God works on our behalf. Remember, we concluded with saying he told us to stand still and see to be still and know this battle you don't need to fight because God's going to do it. We just have to show up. That was a quick recap from Sunday. Hallelujah. But as I was meditating, the Lord spoke to me. He said, you gave spiritual. He said, but you have part of your body that's struggling in the natural. I know I'm talking to somebody out there, anybody out there struggling in the natural. I'm going to go ahead and put on my comment section so I can see. I know that there's somebody struggling to rest. You struggle to get to sleep at night. When you're sitting down, your mind is racing all over the place. You can't settle in. Is there anybody out there? I'm, I'm just going to sit here and wait for your comments. I typically don't do that. I typically just go forward. But anybody out there? And, and there's a little delay here. Anybody out there? See, there you go. I have, I'm struggling. A hand lifted up. See, God knows what we have need of. Before you can even ask, he's already prepared the way to give you rest on tonight. Naturally, you have to rest because if you can't rest in the natural, you definitely won't be resting in the spirit because your, your, your soul will overtake you because you can't settle yourself down enough to even study the word, to even pray the word, to even meditate on the word. So God said, I'm going to give you rest. I want you to rest in the natural. And let me tell you, God is so concerned about every part of our being, spirit, soul, and body. He even put the scriptures together for us to be able to rest. My, look how many people out there struggling. Come on now. Holy Spirit was concerned about you. That's why the word of the Lord says he perfects that which concerns you. See, I can give you all the spiritual pieces. I can talk about the gifts of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit and all the different miracles, signs, and wonders, but you can't even even get there because your mind is not being regulated, but a mind that stayed upon him is going to be in peace. So I'm calling your peace to come in tonight. I'm calling you to have peace and sweet rest on tonight. I'm calling you to, oh, I'm going to lay down, hallelujah, in peace on tonight. We're going into all those scriptures on tonight. Glory to you. You ought to be rejoicing and shouting right where you are that the Lord is concerned about you not sleeping at night and you're not going to need sleeping pills. You're not going to need anxiety pills. I decree and I declare as a prophet of the living God, you're coming 
God for all of that medication because God is going to cause you to lay down in peace and sweet rest. Can you have faith enough to believe that tonight? Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory. My God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. So let's go into the scripture on tonight. Glory to God. God even established a pattern when he created the heavens and the earth. Glory to God. He created them and he created the day and the night because he knew we would labor in the daytime and we needed nighttime to rest. God in his infinite wisdom aligned everything. My God, everything for us. But can I tell you how man messed it up? You know, we know man had the fall and now man toiled by the sweat of his brow. I told you that on Sunday. But now women toil at the sweat of their brows. And now man and woman are working night shift. And now their days and their nights are all. I'm not talking real talk in here, in this room. Glory to God. We go, we talking in the room on tonight. We call it the KIGWC Transformation Place Room. Hallelujah. We get our nights and our days. We're like little babies because you work three days. You're off two. You're on nights at one time. Then you're on days another time then they make you work 12 hours then you got to work eight hours then they calling you to take call and, and and so we get all of that mixed up then you have children and jobs and extracurricular then you have church activities come on all of that commands our attention and then we can't rest but god said we're gonna put our priorities in order god family church that's why I'm very cautious of how many extra times I ask you to come to the house of God because we could get so busy being at the church and our ministry of our family gets left behind. Come on, I'm helping you now. You at the church four days a week, that's out of order. That's not God. Yes, we can still be doing the things of God, but we have to have our family balance. Hallelujah. If I got you at, at, at this meeting this day and decorating this day and church this day and Bible study this day and rehearsal this day, when do you have time to minister to your husband? When do you have time to minister to your wife? See, that's that's why the church is that's why you got more divorce in the church than in the world. See, I'm going to talk real talk, but we're going to rest from that mess. Oh. Uh, that was free. I wasn't supposed to even be talking about that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Day and the night. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. God established the day and tonight. We in Tuesday night teaching, and they're trying to get into the wisdom room. Could somebody tell them we on Tuesday night teaching? They're just blowing up my phone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the name of Jesus. Listen, he established the day and the night, but I told you on Sunday that while we we're resting, God was going to be working. R-E-S-T, while we we're resting, God was going to be restoring. Oh, come on and bless the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. So let, let's go through some steps. I, I wrote some things down and I wrote them down specifically so that I could stay on task. I don't go off on a tangent. Hallelujah. You know, I, I don't like to stay on notes, but tonight I want to stay there so that we can get off in a timely fashion. Amen. Give you a quick time to do what you need to do in your home and then give you the allotted time that you need so that we can get into the wisdom room. Hallelujah. So the first thing God says is I want to deal with your sleepless nights. Go to Psalms chapter number four. Hallelujah. Psalms four. Glory to God. Let's go to Psalms four. I want to get to a specific verse, but I want to read a good bit of Psalms 4. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? But know that the Lord had set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. When was the last time you called to God to help you to go to sleep before you took that pill? Standing up, and I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. Let me, do, 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 do. no, no, no. Listen, until you get delivered and the doctor prescribed it, it's okay. 
but your deliverance is nigh you, it's in your mouth. Again, when was the last time you called on God? Oh, God. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord and not in that medicine, not in that bottle to help you to sleep. Come on now. I'm trying to help. You got to have that little sip <laughs> to help you sleep, to relax you. The devil is a liar. I didn't say you were going to hell. I'm helping you right here. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. This is where I want you to get right here to number eight, verse number eight. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only maketh me dwell in safety. You don't have to worry about what's going on outside of your house. You plead the blood, you cover your perimeters. And the Bible says that I will lay me down in peace and sleep. Verse number eight is what you need to plead at night. God, I'm going to lay down in peace and I'm going to rest. I'm going to sleep. What is sleep? Sleep is resting. Sleep is resting. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Sleep is resting. Glory to Jesus. God says, I want to give you rest, not just in the realm of the spirit from your labor, thinking that you can get into it. Hallelujah. But I want you to understand that I want you to be able in the natural to get you some sleep. Can you trust God for that? Can you trust him for that? Go to Psalm 16. Go to Psalm 16. See, the psalm is full of what you need. The psalms, see, we, we typically think the psalm is just for singing, for the worship music, for the worshipers. But listen, psalm has what we need to rest. Go to Psalm 16. Look at verse number one and verse number two in Psalm 16. It says, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. I just asked you, can you trust God to put you to sleep? Oh, I heard something right there. We go in, and you ever had surgery, don't you trust the anesthesiologist or the anesthetist to put you to sleep? See, I, I've had surgery before, and they put me to sleep. And each time I've gone in, I, told, I would say, I need to talk to them. And I tell them, don't give me too much of that stuff. But say, I know you're the one put me to sleep, but I trust God to wake me back up. Because uh, I put my trust and my confidence in God. Because the Bible said to put no confidence in man. I put my trust in God. Man will slip and give you a little bit too much. Or not enough and you feel some stuff. <laughs> okay, Pastor, go stop. Verse number, two of, <laughs> verse number two of Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my God, my goodness. He extended not to thee. Now go to verse number seven. I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night season. Come on, what you, he instructing us how to go to sleep. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, listen at this. My heart is glad and my glory I just got distracted. Rejoice it. My flesh also shall rest in hope. My flesh. See, we, the flesh gets crucified to go to sleep so that you can rest. What are you resting in? The hope that God's going to allow you to get, to get to that point where you're sleeping, where you're resting. Because now your, your confidence in God is taking care of all that business. I don't have to worry. I don't have to stress. God got it. I can rest in the realm of the spirit and in the natural because my confidence is that God is at work while I'm resting. God is restoring what the palm worm, the canker worm, and the caterpillar has stolen. God is doing it while I'm asleep. God is, oh, God is doing it. Hallelujah. Is God doing anything for anybody on tonight? Hallelujah. Is God, is God helping you in any way on tonight? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look, let's go over into Psalms 23, familiar passage of scripture. We, we should be able to say it. He going to lead you beside the still waters. 
the still waters. Have you ever gone and sat beside water? You just need to, to free your mind. Just go take a little drive and go sit by a pond or sit by a lake. Or, or many people say when you go fishing, I've experienced it myself. Go fishing and when you get, it's just so relaxing. I never thought it would be something I would like. Amen. But every time Elder has taken me to fish, it's just relaxing. Why? Because it's by the waters, by the still waters. And then it says, he restoreth my soul. What does restore it start with? Rest. While you're sleeping and while you're resting, he's rejuvenating. He's restoring. He's redeeming. Come on now. That's what God wants to do. It says, first of all, let me just go back. First, it says he makes you to lie down in green pastures. He said, I didn't take you into a muddy river. I brought you by a, a green pasture, not even a, a, a wintry or an autumn pasture. I brought you in the spring and the summer pasture where things are blossoming and things are blooming. Oh, my God. God says, I want to bring you to a place where even in your sleep, it's like a springtime. Like it's summertime, things are blossoming. and That's how good it's going to feel. That's why it says, surely goodness and mercy, my God, shall follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalms 127. Oh, the psalm good tonight. As I was meditating and asking the Lord and, and, and looking up scripture, hallelujah, to bless us on tonight so that we can rest, not just tonight, but in the days to come. And you're going to gradually be able to wean yourself off of the habits, hallelujah, that the enemy wants to make you feel that you're addicted and, and you have to have it. And again, I'm not coming against that, but God wants us healed and delivered in our whole body, spirit, soul, and body. Glory to God. We, we get so hyper spiritual, we forget about the natural things that God wants to ha hand us over through his word, through his word. And I know that's a deliverance all in and of itself. I understand that's a, the type of deliverance, getting a breakthrough, but it's some natural things that we can do. Very natural things. We can change our eating habits. Come. Some of the things we eat congest us and, and, and cause us not to be able to sleep. Some of the things we watch keep us up at night. You know, I can't sleep without the television on. Put the wrong thing on. That gets in your spirit. If it's not a gospel channel, if it's not Christian music, if it's not a word going down in there, you got to watch what that television is releasing while you're sleeping. I'm trying to help us tonight. I'm trying to help us tonight. Glory to God. You got to watch. See, the, the enemy is a deceiver of the brethren. He's a trickster. He's a liar. Glory to God. But I came to break his back on tonight and to let you know it's not going to happen. Not on my watch. You will be empowered with the word. You will be empowered to be able to overcome these obstacles and challenges so that we can go to greater realms in the spirit because we're going to correct the natural things so that we can blossom in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Psalms 127. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. We can't do it. We have to give it over to the Lord and allow the Lord to build. Allow to build. He said the watchman going to be even in vain. It is vain for you and me to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he giveth his beloved. The God is telling us, mm -mm, that no, 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 it should not be so that you're not resting, that, that, that you got to rise, you go to bed late and you rising up early, you can't sleep. You couldn't sleep. So you didn't go to sleep till two o'clock and here you up again at five. You only got three hours of sleep. Science tells us you need at least eight hours of sleep. Children need at least 10. Tell them children go to bed at night, train them up the way that they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it, which means they're going to teach their children. God. It, am I helping you? Even when they're out of school, you have to set limits. See, God said, be natural tonight. Hallelujah. And I just ask him always to give me revelation while I'm speaking and the things that are not in my notes. I didn't want to go on a tangent, but somebody needs this on tonight. They come in from school, get them to do their homework, give them their little snack, do what needs to be done, but give them a certain time to come in, have a bath, be ready for bed. Glory to God. Of course, you're going to feed them. Hallelujah. Come on. We have to do practical things in this season. Practical things. Glory to God. 
That's why we have Bible study at 6.30 instead of 7 or 7.30, because I need you to get home with your family and keep your routines. Oh, God. God is talking today. See, I'm trying to tell you, I didn't just make up times. I thought and prayed these things through so that I was not a distraction and the ministry was not a distraction. And I know the praise team stays in as a dog, but I hope you got your business lined up at home so that the children are taken care of, you know, while you're doing what you've been called to do in the ministry. We, ha we have to be consistent in doing things right. So that God be glorified because I don't want anybody to say that Kingdom Impact Global Worship Center was the cause your home was out of order. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let's go to Psalms 131. Hallelujah. Psalms 131. Glory to God. Anybody, everybody there? Pastor got notes all over the place. Hallelujah. Psalms 131 reads, Lord, I, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Listen, when you get caught up in things that are above what you should be doing, you haven't gotten there yet, but because you saw somebody else doing it, it's weighing heavy on you. You're trying to keep up. Oh, that's what it's saying. You're trying to keep up in great matters. That's too high for you guys. That's why you can't rest. That's why I often say, let's stay in our lanes. If God didn't call me to it, trust me, I'm not losing rest trying to keep up with somebody else. He didn't call me to do that. So it's, it's, it's imperative that you not stress yourself on something that you have not been called to do. Now, if I asked you to do something, and you strive to do it and you see it's too much, then you come back. Because I'm going to ask you if the Lord tells me to, but if it doesn't work, we shift. We shift. See, we're not too big to, to realize that that's not working. We shift. And that works for you on your job, at your home. Listen, if you need to hire a grass cutter, get you one. If it's running your blood pressure up every time you try to cut the grass because you're trying to help your husband because he's working long hours. If you're a single mother and your, your son is not of the age yet to be able to cut grass, the law will provide for you. Let me tell you, when I tell you he'll supply your need, if he sees that you're making an effort to align your household, God will send somebody to volunteer to cut your grass. That's plain and free right there. Let me tell you. But when you put your trust in God, did you ask him? Send help? The Bible says he's a ever present help in a time of trouble. I just read to you in the very first passage of scripture, I think when we went to Psalm 3, he said, "When was I asked you, when was the last time you cried out to the Lord for help? Oh God, oh God. Let's, let's go back to Psalms 37. Psalm 37. Glory to Jesus. We're going to go to Psalm 37. Hallelujah. And we're going to read verse number seven for your hearing. Psalm 37, verse 7. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. A lot of times we spend our time worrying about our neighbor over there. Worrying about who just did this and who just got that and why this happened and why that happened. But the Bible says, fret not by thyself because of him who prospered in his way. You don't know how people do what they do. But we spend unnecessary, and I know I'm in, I'm in the vein. I know I'm in the vein. Go ahead and repent. Worrying about something you've been desiring and here Joe Blow got it over there. And you know, well, they don't work. They don't, uh. God said. Labor to enter into rest for yourself. Rest in the Lord and wait Wait patiently for God to give you the desires of your heart. But while you're waiting, seek first the kingdom. Righteousness, it's going to be added. While you're resting in God, meditating on the things of God, he's going to lay you down for sleep. And let me tell you something. While you get into a good rest, good rest, he'll give you a dream. That'll give you a creative idea to get your wealth. That's what he does. He says, I give you power to get wealth. He said, I'm going to speak to you in visions and I'm going to speak to you in dreams. Oh, somebody ought to be shouting right there, knowing that when you go down to sleep, God getting ready to give you some rest. 
and he's going to give you some dreams and you coming up with an entrepreneurial spirit. See, that's what the kingdom is about. We're going to come up with an entrepreneurial spirit where we can advance the kingdom, where we can move the kingdom. We're going to work on our own hours, on our own time. Hallelujah. We're going to make more doing less, having more free time for God and our families in the daytime because we're not tied to a time clock. Because you're going to rest. You're going to get in a REM sleep, a deep sleep, and then God can talk to us when we're not racing all over the place told the intercessors, I said, start asking God to give you visions and dreams. He said, you have not because you ask not. Hallelujah. Because when he begins to give them visions and dreams, he going to speak to them as his prophets. He going to prepare the way. He going to begin to give us the things that we need to know in this season. Because, you know, this is the year where we get ready to blow up. Hallelujah. The church is the place to be. Can I tell him? Y'all better tell him the church is the place to be. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm not talking about the four walls. I'm talking about being a part of the kingdom. Hallelujah, because the church is coming alive like never before. And I'm not talking about because you got large members, large numbers. God makes numbers count. He's going to take this remnant and we're going to do great exploits for the kingdom. Now, I'm going to get to this last scripture and we're done. Acts chapter number three. Acts chapter number three. So I want everybody to get into the wisdom room on time. And I want you to go back and look at all of these scriptures. I want you to do this replay again this week and let the Lord minister to you. Go to Acts chapter number three. And we're going to verse number 19. Acts 3, 19. What does it start off with? Everybody put that first word in, in your chat box. Everybody put the first word in the chat box. Just a few of you. Everybody just hit the chat box. What's that first word in Acts 3 and 19? That's it. That's it. You have not been trusting God. You have not been resting in God. You have not been calling out to God. You've been relying on something that man has given you more than you're relying on what God has given you. If you're relying on a pill or a bottle or whatever it is, glory to God. Oh, God, I hear you. Mm, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. You even rely on sex to put you to sleep. The devil is a liar. See, I got to keep it real. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No more carnality for sleep. I understand husbands and wives. That's not what I'm saying. But you get fixated on something thinking that you have to have that. And God says, all you need is me. Oh, God. It says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And here we go. He wants a time of refreshing to hit your house. And it's going to come from the presence of the Lord. Your refreshing and your rest will come from the presence of the Lord. Anybody need a refreshing? Anybody need some rest? Anybody need to repent for trusting in something other than the promises of God that are yes and amen? Hallelujah. Your refreshing is upon you. Your peace is upon you. Your rest is coming upon you. Hallelujah. You're going to begin to even yawn early tonight. And don't listen, don't fight it. Even if you're in the wizard, it, listen, if it comes upon you, go to sleep. Because I decree and I declare. That you will lay down in peace and sweet rest. You're going to lay down and have sleep tonight. I demand the spirit that is contrary to your rest and your peace to loose you in the name of Jesus. And I decree that the presence of the Lord will overtake you. Hallelujah. And you will have sleep on tonight. I thank the Lord. Hallelujah. That he wants us to rest in the spirit and rest in the natural. Glory to God. There are many more scriptures that I could have brought you to, but this is enough for you to chew on. This is enough to bring you into the presence, enough to bring you to the place where you recognize where the enemy was trying to backdoor you and come in and sneak attack and take away your peace. Take away what you need, what God created in the beginning, day and night, and he created night for the rejuvenation and for the rest. The rest, R-E-S-T, your sleep, your peace, your comfort. God created the night. God could have made, you know, Alaska. Let's look, look at Alaska. 
always dark or always daytime. But God thought enough of us to put us in a place where we have day and night. Even though we have daylight savings time, etc., he still give us, gives us enough day and enough night. And we need to take heed to what we're doing with what God has given us. Amen. As I take heed to the flock that he's given me oversight of, you need to take heed to the word that he's given you. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We give you the glory, honor, and praise on tonight. We ask you to seal this word in the hearts of your people. We pray now, God, that the word has fallen on good ground and shall produce fruit, which is called peace and rest on tonight. The fruit of peace and the fruit of sweet rest will be granted to your servants on tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. If you're on this line, hallelujah, and you want to accept Christ as your Savior, it wasn't a word of salvation, but let me tell you, when you when you get salvation, you get the peace of God. You get the rest of God. You get somebody that you can trust in, have confidence in, the God that we can cry out to and we can call on. Listen, if you're on this line and God has moved in your life on tonight, or if you've been watching this live and you want to connect with Kingdom Impact Global Worship Center, there on the screen, you see the number 985-228. 6663. We ask that you call that number or text that number, leave your name and number, and we'll have one of our intercessors, hallelujah, call you back, minister to you, pray with you, and help you to meet your needs, either to connect with this ministry or a place that's close to your home, where you can grow up in a word teaching church and you can learn the things of God, blossoming in the kingdom and becoming a true disciple and advance the kingdom here in the earth realm. That means you're going to believe that Jesus is the son of God. You're going to believe that in your heart and you're going to confess it out of your mouth. And just like that, you shall be saved. If that's you on tonight, you can go put that's me in the chat box. You can say it's me because see, you can't be ashamed to own him here, even in the chat box. Hallelujah. On social media, you can say you're talking to me. I'm ready to connect to the kingdom. I want to be saved. I want to be healed, delivered, set free and connect to a local body. You can say that's me. Hallelujah. Oh, well, we're done for tonight, except for the giving, because worship is a part of giving. Glory to giving is a part of worship. Oh, I said that backwards. Giving is a part of worship. You know, we have tithe, offering, and seed sowing. And here at Kingdom Impact Global Worship Center, we know that this is good ground. And we recognize that we cannot, no matter how we try, beat the giving of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tithes, offering, and seed, as I just said. You're going to start to see the announcements up on the screen. Glory to God. The first way that you're able to give is by way of cash app. Excuse me. You can give by way of cash app. It's dollar sign K-I-G-W-C. Again, dollar sign K-I-G-W-C. You can give. Please look for the K. You can see that on the screen right there. Please look for the blue K. Again, I'm stressing, if you, this is your first time giving in the year 2022, I stress that you put something that ends in a, a 20 or a 22, whether it's $20, $20 and 22 cents, $202, $2,022, $50 and 20 cents, $50 and 22 cents. Listen, God is commanding that we give in those numbers. Glory to God. Don't miss out on what God is going to do for you and your family. Because as you give, he's going to give back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Again, you can give by Cash App. You can use our Easy Tithe which means you can go to Easy Tide if you have that app on your phone, or you can actually um, go to our donate page on our website. Amen. Again, we can go to Easy Tide, or you can go to our website, which is www.kingdomimpactcenter.org, and you can donate there. Of course, there's always an opportunity you can give by credit card, uh, confidential card swipe, whereas Visa, MasterCard, whatever card that you have. If you have that particular card, you can call the number that's on the screen, 985-859-4674. You can, at the conclusion of the broadcast, you can call that number. Go ahead and screenshot it so that you can go back to it, 985-859-4674, and she'll accept that card swipe. Or you can mail it in. Our P.O. Box is 185, and we're located in Race, Louisiana. Again, that's P.O. PO Box. Getting tongue-tied on tonight. P.O. Box 185 in Race, Louisiana. Amen and amen. We're going to move on to our announcements. Had to pause for a brief sip of water as we move on 
to our announcements. Please be reminded that on this coming Sunday, we will be partaking in Holy Communion on this Sunday. Uh, we remind you that you should have all of your sacraments available, your wine, your juice, uh, your crackers, your bread, have those things ready and in place for our Sunday service. Amen. We're still going to be uh, virtual on Sunday so you can have those things near you on Sunday. I can't say if we'll do it at the beginning of the service or the end of the service, but just know Holy Communion is on Sunday. So have things in place. Amen. Anybody ready for Holy Communion? I am. But the Bible says it's often that you eat this bread and drink this cup. So we could take it every day. Matter of fact, during this, this time of the pandemic, I urge you to partake. I mean, he says everything that we need is in the cup. Amen. And then on tonight at 730, we're moving forward to the wisdom room at the time of 730. I open the room about between 725 and 728. If you're all in, just jump in the room. Amen. Just jump in the room. We've been having an awesome time in the Lord. So I implore you to meet us in the wisdom room. Again, I love you in the Lord. I'm thankful that you were able to join us on tonight. We seal every word on tonight. We cover the seed that you will sow and we pray that the blessing of the Lord overtaken as you have given. Hallelujah. He will give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. He'll cause men to give unto your bosom with the same measure that you have given. I love you in the Lord. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the wisdom room on tonight. Go back to our family page, find the link and join us in that room. Have a blessed evening in the Lord. I love you.